banana slam jam. How you doing, man? Yeah, good, thanks. Uh, so, I see on your thing, did I see correctly, that you're 500 MMR? Yes. So we got ourselves a bottom of the trench coaching session today. Yeah, be be nice, chat. Yeah, guys, be be nice. So, what's the deal, man? Like, why you? How long you been playing Dota? Why you? Why are you down there? All that kind of stuff. Um, I I kind of played on and off since um probably like 2015. Um, and to be honest, I've never I've I've always enjoyed watching it more than sort of playing it. Uh, until COVID kind of hit, and then I was in the house a lot, and it's fun to do. So I kind of got a bit serious, and then I'd never calibrated, so I've only just kind of relatively recently calibrated. Um, I just never, I always played on ranks. So, yeah, basically never took it too seriously, but if I'm playing more, more and more, it feels like I should try and get better. I uh, just want to make sure whatever's happening, you're probably like talking into the mic a little bit and then like away from it. It's like your volume's going a little up and down. Just letting you know. Um, but yeah, I heard you. So, uh, where are you from, by the way? England. Oh, it's, it's always Australia or England. That's, uh, I didn't want to guess, though. So, um, cool. So, it's pretty late for you. Okay, so. Um, yeah, let's get started. So you, you know, you gave me a little of your background. It says you play carry position. Uh, what exactly are you wanting? Like, if you could say, you know, be a shame after this session, I want to be able to do this. Like, what's, what's that? To be honest, I want to know that my decision making process is correct. Right? Yeah. Like, I want to know that what, what I'm going through in my head is leading me to at least a good answer, if not always the best one. But okay, sure. Um, do you have a few games in mind? Yeah, I've got a couple. They're actually not um, not carry particularly. One of them I kind of ended up carry. Um, should I just stick that in the Discord? Yeah, go ahead and stick the game ID in the Discord, and we'll get it going. I, this game was a loss, and it was a game where I felt like I probably did quite well overall and I just kind of want to see what I could have done better in this game specifically and what am I being slow is that what the problem is is am I not thinking about things fast enough or um you know it, what what exactly is it that led to this loss okay because this one, this one kind of hurt to be honest sure man so um this is uh, it's gonna be an interesting one for me so first and foremost, my question for you is, I'll just always ask you your opinion. What is like the most important thing for the first like five minutes of the game for you? Well, hitting, as uh, position one, hitting creeps and, okay. and hitting CS. Okay. So is there anything that I might see wrong with your items if that's what your answer is? I bought too much regen. Um, the mangoes, I... I I kind of thought this at the time, but I didn't know who I was laning against. So I thought, let's just get the mana and maybe we can kill them. Okay. That was all it was. So let's just change that mindset real quick. So okay. the thing about your MMR, as we go up, it just evolutionizes exactly how you have to approach it. But you have to hit as many CS as you possibly can. Like, you have to get as many last hits and denies as possible. So what yeah. I see with your items is that you have no quelling, and you're talking to me about killing people. And that's, that's not what I said. That's not even what you said. That's that, that You gave me that answer, which I believe is correct. Like, it's a good answer. But your your items don't tell me that. Your items tell me that you're trying to kill people. Like, you're you're going for mana so that you can cast your spells. Like, if you're a carry tiny... Which one of these spells gives you last hitting? Do you know? Like, which one helps you last hit? Uh, I would probably go Avalanche, but Toss is good as well. You don't think the 25% bonus damage uh, yeah, yeah. on yeah. attacks is what gives you last hitting? So I, I, yeah, definitely. And now you've said it, it's really obvious. But does the Cleave not hurt the lane equilibrium? 
Uh, worry about that. If, in this case, you're a 350 ranged 80 damage hero. In this case, any of these two spells you level, you're a 180 ranged 64 damage hero. Okay, yeah. So when we look at Dota, all I care is that you can see us. That's all I care. Whatever hero you're playing, if your ability leveling griefs your ability to see us, then it does, nothing else fucking matters at the end of the day. Nothing else matters. So yes, I'm glad you're thinking about lane equilibrium, but you're thinking of like 4k level. I need you to think like, let's get you out of 500 MMR. So the way, okay, you, yeah. the way you get out of 500 MMR is you get 45, 50 CS at 10 minutes into the game. If you can do that, no matter what unorthodox wonky hero you're playing, you'll have a way higher chance to win the game. Uh, that's just, it really is that plan simple. You guys are often very distracted when I when I coach low MMR games. You guys just kind of are all over the place doing a bunch of random stuff that I can't really like. It's fun, it's funny to me. It's like it's like you're playing a different game, right? Like I'm like watching. And I'm like, okay, that doesn't fucking matter, and they're doing that. That doesn't fucking matter, and they're doing that. So what I've realized is, rather than telling you all the things you're doing wrong, I want to just focus on what is right and steering you towards it so that i think it's much easier to work that way so yeah i understand what you're thinking but you're that's like a mid offlane approach you know let's disrupt their farm a little bit let's let's mess with them all that kind of stuff um let's see here okay let's just so how many games of dota have you played um, kind of lost count, because like I say, it's been kind of on and off over a long period of time. But, you know, probably like 500, 1,000 maybe? I, I don't know. It's... Gotcha. Okay. But to be honest with you, a lot of them, I have done a lot with bots. So like against people, probably only like 100. Oh, I see. Okay. So like your CSing skill is obviously pretty decent. I'm watching you get... Like, you obviously know what Creep Aggro is. Um, kind of interesting. The, um, how do I word this? The, this weird mixture of really knowing what you're doing compared to a 500 MMR player, and then these, like, really wonky things that confuse me. So, I think at the simplest level, your mechanics are pretty decent in regards to CSing. Like, uh... You, you, looks like you do a little bit of A stop A. Looks like you know how to aggro. Things that most people in your MMR don't do at all. And then you just randomly hit this anti mage. You've done this like four times now. Yeah. Um, and to be honest with you, now I'm watching it back. I'm like, why am I trying to trade hits with this anti mage? Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so the, there's just really inconsistent play here. So I want there to be something to focus on. So. If you're going to pick a hero, like, how many games of Tiny have you played? Um, 15, something like that. Okay. So, I guess... Let me think about this. So, yeah, it seems really obvious when I mention it that you're supposed to, you know, level your tree and you buy a Quelling Blade because that's, like, the whole goal of the lane. If you notice, the lane equilibrium kind of went out of control anyways. Yeah, it did, But yeah. to be quite frank, this Pudge is literally doing nothing. The Anti-Mage is only hitting you when you're hitting him. Your, your support player is throwing out a nuke here and there. But just to be blunt, nobody here is doing anything. Like, if you look at it, it's kind of just like this 2v2 standoff where you guys are kind of looking at each other most of the time. And the fact is, that's 500 MMR for you. Like, we're not going to sugarcoat it. You guys are literally just yeah, yeah, looking yeah. at each other while you're CSing. And that's because, at the, at the end of the day, everyone in Dota, it's a race to get everything done. And it's about how many actions per minute and how many thoughts per minute you can have. And most people, if they're relatively newer to the game or don't play all that consistently, they can't focus on CSing and harassing and aggroing and lane pulling and maintaining lane equilibrium and, you know, her, and, you know trading hits and... All that shit. You know, you can't do that. So, what I need to do with players like yourself, kind of already said it, but I'm going to say it again, is I need to break it down and choose one at a time in order of which ones are the most important. So, if you want to get out of this bracket, I don't need you to know how to defensively creep aggro. 
I need you to get every single fucking CS with a quelling blade and item and abilities that help you CS. Like that is what I need you to do. Whatever hero you're playing, you're playing Wraith King, you get that crit. You know, you're playing Tiny, you buy a fucking quelling blade and you take that treat. You know, whatever hero you're playing, you need to focus on whatever skill could possibly help you get CS. Anything that can help you get CS is a stun, uh, is a passive, like Ursa's passive, is an AoE nuke of some sort, uh, any of these spells. Like, I know that now you may say BSJ, that Avalanche and Toss, those are nukes and stuns and stuff. But at the end of the day, they cost twice as much mana and as the third spell, and the third spell literally gives you damage. So... The goal is to take the one that's the cheapest, like out of all of them, uh, mana costs. You know, like you can only you only have so many resources in a laning phase that combines your health as well as your mana. So when we like, if you're gonna practice a hero or you're gonna play a hero, I want you to just read their skills and say, hmm, which one costs the least amount of mana and helps me CS. And you can pick straightforward heroes, you know, like and if you're gonna play carry, I think like the Ursas of the world are pretty straightforward. Uh, like, PA is pretty straightforward. Uh, Wraith King is pretty straightforward. Uh, the, you know, these are heroes that have, like, pure, purely obvious abilities that help them CS a bit better. And they also scale with farm pretty straightforward. Like, the thing about this game, and I'm going to keep talking to you about Tiny, but I'm going to use it in a general sense of what you can do with other heroes because I don't think teaching you carry Tiny is going to, like, help you in the long run, is all this other interaction, if, if you can defensively creep aggro and get all these last hits, you will be far above 500 MMR. <laughs> I, I will tell you that right now. And you're actually doing a decent job of getting most of the last hits. So the funny thing about this is you're giving yourself like the worst possible tools to CS with. You're literally just a 72 damage rock with no abilities being casted for CSing. And you're still getting most of them. Obviously, we just watched you miss a couple there as I, as I proceed to say that. Um, so you get hooked now. And you TP base. Okay. So, I understand to the average viewer watching that this looks like, with all due respect, some potato shit. But, what yeah, we're yeah. going to learn is, I'm going to focus on one little thing at a time. Because I think if I talk about all these, like, random things that just cause you to go base, it's not going to help you. So, uh, let's, let's play this out. You, you took your tree, you're using it. Um, okay. I'm just going to fast forward a bit. Yes. Do you have like like three or four replays for me to watch if possible? I've got a few. Yeah. I can, okay. I can okay. I, I I think with you, I'm gonna probably spend about 25 minutes or so max on each replay. Maybe maybe 20. Because I I want to see your patterns here. Because I can't I, gather I enough for you. Go ahead. Sorry, I prepared some questions and stuff as well. If if there's like a little bit of time. Yeah. The end, so. Okay. So um, this is something where after the session. I highly recommend you write this down in a notebook, okay? So this is something yeah. I've done before, but I'm now going to lay this out for you guys, okay? This is a step-by-step -step that I don't know where it is, and I'm actually going to literally tell my YouTube editor to clip this so I don't have to do it again. And it's not because it's, you know, I hate you guys. I just, this is something I've said before that I know at this point is consistent enough among you that you all need to see it. So we are 18 minutes in this stream. 18 minutes in this stream. Um, breakdown of mindset, of general mindset um, in different portions of the game. Uh, okay, so. Plain and simple. I need everyone in the low Mars to just break it down for themselves so they're not overthinking the game. For the first five minutes, your goal is to get as much CS as possible. So, it, it, like, when we're getting higher up, we can worry about making sure that the support takes the least amount of XP, that there's some, like, extra pulls going on. You know, like, that's the kind of stuff that can really uh, boost your experience in comparison to the opponent, because then now you're, like, adding extra creeps into the lane from the pull camps. But... The focus for the first five minutes, it's a ramp-up stage. Everything you're doing is sustaining the lane, meaning you're just buying yourself extra health and mana regen. You're buying yourself your early items that help you sustain through this stage. And the whole goal of the first five minutes is to get as many creeps as possible without getting shoved out of lane. That's, like, the only goal, like, of the first five minutes of the game. So 
everything you guys do needs to be with the mindset of, I don't really care that much about lane equilibrium. I don't care that much about everything else in the game. If you're 5k, you have to care about lane equilibrium and shit. If you're 3k, yeah, maybe it matters to you a bit. If you're if you're at the bottom of the barrel, you're new to the game, whatever, I need you to get as many creeps as possible. So what I mentioned in this replay to my student here, my fellow, my friend here, is that I, I said he needs to buy Quelling, he needs to level his Tree Toss, because that's the ability that helps him CS, and he needs to focus purely on CSing. And if, like, as we go up, you get to add stuff onto this. So if you're going to be, like, 1500 MMR, we can start worrying about defensively creep aggroing. If you're 2500 MMR, we can also use that to throw in some pull camps. Then we can start talking about harassing and trading and timings and, you know, precise itemization. But at the very core of things, how much CS can you get in the first five minutes? Now, once you get to the five minute mark, that's when the catapults come into play. So after we've gotten past this regen CSing stage, we now need to get to the stage where we understand lane pressure starts to matter. Okay, so what lane pressure means for the newer players out there is that if your towers are consistently taking damage to creeps or heroes, inevitably it creates more space on the map for the team that is doing it. And it also means that uh, there's, more, like, there's more room to farm, like I said, but also it's information. Anytime the creeps are on the opponent's side of the map, it's telling you, hey, somebody's supposed to be there. If they're not there, you can gather some information from that. If they show up, then you also know they're there. It's like a safety thing. It protects you. So as a carry, at this stage, around five minutes is when you start to look to push the lane. It's not precisely always five minutes, but this is a stage where we look to accelerate our game into more than just the lane. Because at this point, you're usually like at least level five. You're, I know it's a little behind on your part here, but it's fine. You're at least level five. You've usually got like one or two small items, which allow you to also jungle as well as lane creeps. You got a little bit of sustain going, and then you're able to push more than just hitting the creeps. So what happens is, the old, old point of this stage is say, okay, I've built up, I've got like, you know, 30 CS in five minutes. I've gotten as many creeps as I can. Now I'm going to start shoving in the lane and jungling. That's like the default for every hero in the game. There's exceptions to what exactly you're supposed to do, but that's the default. You spend the five to 10 minute mark or so shoving in the lane and farming jungle. And how you go about that is where skill comes in. It's where like what they do to stop you comes in. But at the lowest MMRs, they don't do anything. Like, they're, they're not going to stop you. They're just going to let you shove the wave, and they're going to let you jungle. And so the cool thing is, if you're new to the game, is you can just practice what you're supposed to do. Because the cool part about getting better and better at Dota is, the higher MMR you go, the more people know about what you're supposed to do. So then they try to stop you from doing what you're supposed to do. And then you have to learn how to, like, play around their heroes. And you have to learn how to dodge their skills and all that kind of shit. And that's, like, the mind games that go into Dota. But for you guys... Focus on pushing the lane and jungle. Next step after pushing the lane is jungling is what are you going to do with your first item? Because that's usually when you hit like that, like, you know, you're going Echo Saber. Uh, you know, some carries, they'll go for like a Yasha or a Maelstrom or they're working towards their Battle Fury. And they'll usually hit it somewhere around between the 10 to 15 minute mark. And that's the stage where you start to have to farm the entire map. You're usually not just farming your own lane at that point. I would say at the very latest, the laning stage for the carry ends at 10 minutes into the game. That's like, that's about the very latest it's ever going to go. Sometimes you'll stay in your lane longer, but even if you stay in your lane, you have to worry about other things. You have to be like, is this mid laner going to gank me? Is this off laner going to call, like, get some help? Is this carry on the enemy team going to come push my tower? But, as I ramble on, when you go from 10 minutes onwards, it's like we got to start thinking about, okay, is there any lane I can farm in? Look at the map. Is there any lane pushing into my towers that I can defend? And if there's no answer to that, is there a lane that I can just go push? Meaning, like, there's a lane that's pushed into their tower that I want to take. And if you can't come up with an answer to that, whether it's because you don't know or whether it's because it doesn't exist, then that's when you hit the jungle creeps. And then you ask yourself, hmm, okay, I'm hitting some jungle creeps. BSJ, tell me, what jungle creeps am I going to hit? Well, that's the point in the game where you have to make an educated guess on which lane you would push. If you felt safe enough to go push a lane, which one would it be? And we can talk about all the reasons why you go through different lanes, and I have all types of videos on that kind of shit, but for you guys, you need to know that's the question you have to ask yourself. Which lane would I push? If you think it's bottom, the jungle camps you're farming are the ones right next to bottom lane, right? That's what you're doing. If you think it's mid, you farm the one right next to mid. If you think it's mid or top, you're farming right between those two lanes. 
If you think it's top, you farm, you know, right next to top lane. The point is, that's the mindset you have to have for the first 20 minutes of the game. It seems so simple, but I've gone into plenty of coaching sessions where I'll talk to you guys, you guys talk about kills, you talk about random ass shit. This applies to mid laners as well, honestly. All the other stuff in the game comes next. Because at the end of the day, if you're getting like 20 or 30 CS less than you're supposed to have, nothing else in the game fucking matters. And you're going to remain like 2K, 2K MMR or less. Like, that's just what's going to happen. I, it, it, you, the people that are getting all the kills, you're seeing these amazing flashy plays at the highest level. Guess what? They also have to get 80 CS in 12 minutes. Otherwise, you know, it doesn't fucking matter that they're killing people. So... Uh, what I'm not, I, I know I just went on this spiel to you specifically. I'm kind of done for the sake of, um, uh, future people being able to watch that. Did anything I say there confuse you? Or no, you I any, mean, you, you said, you've said before that it was a very simple game. I just don't understand it all the time. <laughs> yeah, no. So that's what I mean is like, I don't expect this to be super obvious to you, but I, I do want you after the session to watch that back and be like, okay. You know, BSJ told me, you know, first five minutes, all I care about is CSing. Okay, after five minutes, I'm going to push this fucking lane, and then I'm going to jungle. After ten minutes, I'm going to think about what lane I'm supposed to go to. And then I'm going to look to either push a tower or defend a tower. If I don't feel like I can do either of those things, I'm going to jungle. And I'm going to jungle right next to that lane. And then I'm going to be ready to rotate to a lane based on whatever I think. And it's like, you know, you may be feeding all over the place. You may go to a random lane and be like, I'm going to go here. And then you're going to die to this guy. But guess what? You learned you probably can't lane against that guy at 12 minutes into the game. You know, you can't play against that hero. That's what you just learned. You learned a matchup. That's crazy, right? You learned a matchup. Like, cool. Yeah. And the next part, you know, is not only realizing, oh, I died to that guy, but why? You know, like, <laughs> how did that guy kill me? Or, you know, was it because there were three people there? Was it because they were all missing and I shouldn't have gone there? But the whole idea is that there's so many things that you guys could possibly interpret as important. And now I'm telling you all that matters. <laughs> and there's so many implications from it that eventually matter. Um, but I, I, I'm hoping this works. Yeah, I, I've tried to break this down for people. But, you know, you, you came into the lane saying all these things about your items and, like, killing people and your skills. Now let's just drop everything, you know, in terms of that approach. And just so, like, right now, I want this lane pushed as fast as possible. And if you're a carry tiny, what's your skill that you can consistently throw out that pushes the lane? I'm asking you. Uh, I mean, avalanche and tree grab. Tree grab. Tree grab is the only one you can sustain. Like, avalanche is your next best, right? So your skill build would be 114. And then 414. Because those are the abilities that shove lanes. Like, that's, that's just how it is. Like, right now, like, you're tossing avalanche out, but it's just not an efficient way to clear the wave. Like, it costs 120 mana, and you're a strength hero. Like, you don't have a lot of mana to work with. So, it's like, now I'd love for you to jungle this big camp, but you don't have any tools to do so. Like, that's what you're supposed to do right here, is jungle that big camp. But you're a hero that you don't have a quelling, you don't have the maxed out skill that helps you farm creeps, so you don't, you don't actually have the resources to be able to do that. But my emphasis is, your job, from five minutes onwards, is to shove the lane in and kill this camp right here. So on whatever hero you're playing, that's your objective. That's what you need to get done. Do you, you, you get what I'm putting out here? Yeah, and to be honest with you, it's probably not the best game to show this because I played differently on a position one tiny because I was a tiny, right? Like, if I was Jug, I'd be spinning that camp. So, but you can only, you can only comment on what no, you're doing, no, so. no, 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 no. So that's why I said I wanted, like, four games from you. Yeah. But here's what people don't get. And this is like, with all due respect to you and everyone who comes into my channel, I don't give a rat's fucking ass if you're playing fucking Techies Carry. I want you to yeah. push this lane and farm the big camp. Yeah. Like, that is what the carry does. So, it's not that, you know, I'm flaming you and saying, like, you shouldn't be picking carry tiny. What I'm saying is, it doesn't matter what hero you're playing. The game is the freaking same. Like, it's the same. Don't overthink it. Push the lane. And farm the big camp. And it's like, there's no excuses. Like, if you're stuck playing random tiny on the carry roll, you're stuck playing fucking Skywrath Mage, you know, as a carry, like, so be it. Figure it out. What does it take at the five minute mark to start shoving the lane and killing the big camp? Like, what does it take on that specific hero? Do I need a bajillion mana? Do I need more right click damage? Do I need move speed? Do I need attack speed? Do I need a maelstrom? You know, what do I need? 
you know and so this is like what i mean by dota is you can continue you can be creative at 500 mmr i'm not telling you to be creative but if you get stuck in these wonky ass drafts i'm going to try to bring you back you know like bring you back to the this is all that matters in the game so i totally get what you mean by i wouldn't willingly put you on carry tiny if you're oh, trying yeah. to learn the fundamentals of dota but like say you come back for another session what i would want to see is you shoving the lane in five minutes and farming that big camp on whatever hero you're playing like that's what i so want to see go ahead in that respect it's quite a good replay to show that actually my mentality was just completely wrong yeah like, uh, like I, i'm thinking about a hero when that has nothing to do with what i should be doing i have a job as a position one Oh, 100 percent that's what i'm saying is you guys tend to come up with all these random things that you say like this is different from a normal game or whatever and it's like if i saw you doing absolutely everything you possibly could to try to kill that big camp and it just didn't work then i'd be like oh you know like yeah you're just a carry fucking tiny you know that's life not much you can do about that but the fact is like you said you were more concerned about killing people quote unquote or being a tiny, quote unquote, it's like I want as many CS as possible in the first five minutes. Shove the lane. It looks like you have the idea that you're supposed to shove the lane. I am watching that. You have been consistently shoving the lane. The problem is, since you're not jungling, the anti mage is literally just getting more experience than you, because he's getting how you're you're sharing the XP with uh, your support, and he's not. So even though you're shoving the lane, the benefit of shoving the lane is the fact that now that you're done shoving the lane, you can now go kill that big camp. So. People ask, you know, BSJ, when am I supposed to push the tower? If, if you're asking me this at like 2,000 2, MMR or less, just worry about it at 10 minutes. Like, let's just think about that later. Like, at 10 minutes, you can worry about pushing the tower. But like, you know, it's, it's niche situations. There's like timings we can hit between 5 and 10 minutes where you push towers. I get that. It happens. But you don't need to know that to get to like 4K, 5K MMR, guys. You, you don't need to know that. So my point being is that everything you did here is setting you up for success and then you're just you're just not hitting the big camp that, that's really yeah. all that boils down to like you have to understand you're gonna get these hoodwink players on your team who have no concept of leaving the lane as support like this guy has literally sat in the lane for 12 minutes in a row why is he 500 mmr because he doesn't leave the lane like he literally doesn't move as a five position he's actually higher level than you because you had the tp home at one point and now yeah. he's just level seven so all I'm pointing out to you is all the little things that you can't control. But what you can control is you shove that creep lane, and then you go hit the jungle creep. That is absolutely what you can control. All these random factors, like, trust me, I can't even begin to fathom what you guys deal with on a daily basis at 500 MMR. So rather than worrying about all this random shit that you can't control, I'm going to worry about all the factors in the game that always matter, are always important. So you're going to TP home. Let's see what you do here. We'll probably only watch, like, the first 20 minutes. Yeah, I don't think it's a, a, a great game. No, no, I, 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 th I think it's actually a, a perfect game. I actually think this is a funny game. Like, this is a game oh, where it's like, okay. you're giving me all these random things going wrong in your game. And I'm like, yeah, it's true, but I don't care. So you go mid, and what I see is that you're trying to put some pressure on a tower. And you're playing Tiny kind of like a... Yeah, you're playing him like a, more like a 2. I wouldn't say a 4. Like, you are running around the map, you're trying to be active... And you're trying to like you're you're prioritizing other people over yourself like you're prioritizing either shutting them down or enabling one of your teammates and you're just level seven at 14 minutes like yeah. that's literally something where unless the opponent is chasing you around the map you should never be level seven at 14 minutes and that's what we're going to focus on going into the next game because even though you're winning i can just tell you at your bracket if you're not solo carrying the game you are relying on 500 MMR players to make the right play to win. I want you to understand that real quick, okay? That you, if you're not the one single-handedly taking over control of the game, you are relying on 500 MMR players to make the right decisions to win you the game. So you will never solo carry the game if you are level 8 at 15 minutes. That is just never going to happen. You're never going to carry. I could not carry single-handedly if I was level 8 at 15 minutes. So let's pull up the next game and see any common trends we see, maybe any good signs we see um, on other heroes. Doesn't really matter what hero it is, man. It can be as wonky, weird, doesn't matter.
So I've got, um, to be honest with you, I've ended up playing support a lot this week. Uh, but I do have another, I have a position two game. Um, okay. But it, it was kind of a rollover. Um, so let's let's check it out. Uh, you sent me the same replay ID. You can make sure. Oh, you sorry, it. you're good. I think what I'm going to do for you, by the way, um, if you are okay with it, I think I'm going to break your coaching session into 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 halves. Like, uh, let's do like ah. 45 minutes today, and then like three days from now, do your other 45. Is that something you'd cool. be okay? Yeah, with? yeah, no, that's that's fine. Yeah, okay. that's that's really cool. Okay, so um, send me this other game. Let's talk about some fundamentals, and then I want to give you like a little bit of homework before you come back and see how you do. That's fine. Sorry, I'm going to have to type it. You're good. I've, I've not, I've not put it on the, I've put it on a notepad, and I've not remembered to change the top line. All good, man. All good. There you go. Okay, so let's check this out. Oops. So you're playing tiny again? Okay. Again, yeah. So quite a stomp, yeah, quite a stomp. Let's see, let's see exactly what you're doing with this stomp, and we'll talk about fundamentals that apply similarly to the landing stage as we see for mid, as we do for carry. So mid's not too complicated either. First five minutes, a lot of little back and forth movements to try to get as much CS and harass as possible, and then you look to shove the lane, jungle or rotate. The only difference between mid and carry for the most part is that instead of just jungling you can often look to rotate so what do i see wrong with your items i have too much sustain you have no quelling blade uh, man just buy a quelling blade another, oh of course yeah just, yeah just buy a quelling <laughs> step I, one out of 500 mmr buy a quelling blade okay so yeah. remember all we care about in the first five minutes is creeps that's all we care about the thing is in my bracket if i was laying against tarsf I'd be shitting my pants about how much they're going to harass me. I have to worry about fighting back. I have to worry about dodging their spells. I have to worry about possibly getting a gank from their four position to bring me down. In your bracket, you have to get as many creeps as possible. That is all that fucking matters. It's all that yeah. fucking matters. So, remember that. Okay, let's, let's play that. Don't even have a lane opponent. Very cool. Okay. Why did he get that CS on you? Because I don't have a quelling blade. Okay, and you don't have this spell. <laughs> yeah. Okay, just making sure we're on the same pitch. Yeah, no, I've, I've, that's in capital letters. <laughs> <laughs> it's not some fucking fancy answers, guys. Usually it's pretty straightforward. Okay, you use your avalanche. Okay, okay, okay. It's like, clearly you know how to defensively creep aggro. And the point is, to reemphasize, this guy hasn't hit you a single time. He's literally ignoring your existence. He isn't trying to deny... Okay, I guess he kind of tried to deny that one. But he isn't hitting you. He's not harassing you. All you have to do is literally just walk up and get creeps. Oh, sick. Okay, you did it. Cool. Okay. Oh, dear. Did I miss all that? Let's not worry about that. What I care about is that you bought your bottle right on time. That's important. You have now used your tree for the first time in lane. Three minutes. Okay. I'm gonna fast forward a bit. I don't play mid very often, just as a sort of another thing. It's part no, of my weekend. Here, here, here's the cool part, man. Guess what? If you want to gain him more. You have to play whatever role you're playing at the equivalent level of a 1500 MMR player. That's all you have to do. If you play consistently like a thousand MMR above whatever MMR you are, you're going to gain MMR. Is it going to be like incredibly fast? No. But let's be honest. How good do you think the average 1500 MMR mid player is? Yeah, probably below average statistically. Ah, pretty fucking bad. So, <laughs> what I'm saying to you is let's not overthink it. What did I tell you matters in the first five minutes? It's the essay. Yes. So for the first five minutes, if you're playing mid, doesn't matter what hero you're playing. Think about what it takes for them to see us. What would it take for a Shadow Fiend to see us effectively? What do you think? I don't know how much Shadow Fiend you've played. Probably zero. Um, yeah, no, I, I played a little bit, but um, he is uh, passive. Uh, I've forgotten which Necromastery. Okay, um, gives, him some ma and... gives him some damage. But in yeah, order to get that passive activated, what does he need? 
he needs his razors. Okay, so what does he need in order to get CSs in the first five minutes? Uh, mana. Mana. There you go. Every hero's different, man. TA, she needs damage. SF, he needs mana. Tiny, he... Honestly, the weakness of Tiny... Blade. Well, quelling, any melee hero needs quelling. But usually with Tiny, his weakness is actually that he has zero base armor and then he gets harassed out of lane. So usually Tinies don't have a problem CSing due to any other problem than the fact that the opponent hits them a lot. Like, they just have yeah. no health. But in your bracket, the beauty of that is... That's not a problem. No so, so the cool thing, though, is that the difference between carry and mid is that everything you've been doing here, I think, is fine if you just have a quelling and you maxed your tree. Or not maxed your tree. You put one point in your tree. Like, if you just did that, great. Now, I know what a lot of people may say. A decent amount of high MMR tiny players, they don't even level tree. But I want you to focus on CSing. So if, you put, if you're mid, you put one point in tree just for the CS. If you're... Um, a side lane tiny, you're gonna max it. You're gonna max that fucking tree because that's that that's what a side laner does. They hit, they push in the lane and they hit creeps. Okay, so the cool thing is as mid, the only difference is you have to push the lane at every two minute interval specifically because that's runes, right? So like right yeah. now it's three forty seven. You would want to shove this lane, right? Like you're gonna shove it and you're gonna go check one of the runes. So there's just different timings for each lane, right? That's all there is. So, like, if you're going to miss the timings by a little bit, I could be like, yeah, he's, like, new to mid, or he doesn't play all that much mid. It's not really muscle memory for him. I get it. You know, I get that. That's fine. So, but that's the only difference. The only difference is the timings in which you're supposed to push the lane are different, and also what you're supposed to do with the lane being pushed is different. That, 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 that's really all there is to it. Um, so, let's not overcomplicate it. Mid's not exactly um, similar to carry, but at the same time, at your bracket, you can play mid like a carry in regards to, let's just shove the lane, get some creeps, get our first item, and then go kill people. So yeah, you go shove the lane, you're like 15 seconds late to that rune, but hey, that's fine with me. If you go check the rune, that's already better than most people in your bracket, as you already noticed, nobody even checked the rune. So, okay, let's fast forward. What's my issue with what's going on right now? I'm not pushing when with the catapult wave. Okay. How much Dota do you watch? I watch a fair bit. I, 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 I think because I don't sort of... I don't really try and analyze it too much, I guess is the problem. No, 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 no. So, let's not... Let, I'll be I'll be honest with you. You're you're beating yourself up a little bit too much. So let's like, let's tone it down on being too hard on yourself. Okay. So okay. I'm being hard on you for being too hard on yourself. There's like some irony going on here, but it's fine. So the reason why I say this to you is because I say what's wrong here, and you're talking to me about pressuring a fucking tower. You don't have you have fucking 900 gold worth of items sitting in base. Do you know what your net worth is? That's like yeah, it's almost half my net worth. That's almost like <laughs> half your net worth, dude. That's the problem. Yeah. Let's like let's not like well, the reason why I asked if you watch Dota is because that's the kind of shit you learn watching. But you don't learn watching pro players or like high MMR streamers. You don't learn the importance of buying items the second you have the gold for it because nobody ever mentions it. Like I'm never gonna mention the significance of myself buying an item the second I get it. You know, like. That never gets talked about on a stream or in a pro match or anything like that, right? That never gets talked about. So this is what I look at. I'm like, okay, I need you to have a quality. I need you to buy that bottle right when you did. I need you to queue up your treads. And my question for you is if you get a component of your treads in the first five minutes on Tiny, out of, the, out of what we've talked about being important, would you get the boots the Glove of Haste or the Belt of Strength first? Glove of Haste. Every wow! Time. Crazy, right? That, that's nuts. Yeah. Because that is the point in the game that you're just CSing, right? And yeah. then it's like by the time it's five minutes rolls around where you might be looking to be aggressive, you might be looking to check more runes, that's when you buy the boots, right? And then, and then you complete the treads. But the whole thing about that is you just need to buy the item when you get the component. And then if you know that all you're trying to do is CS, you'll buy the right item. Like, that's all, that, or hopefully, you know, I mean, 
we can talk about it. It's like, boots don't help you see us. So don't buy that part first, you know? But so that's the beauty of this situation is I don't want you to overthink any of this. I want those items in your inventory. I want a coiling in your inventory. I want this lane shoved in. And you may, you're actually kind of shoving in the lane, but you're operating at like half the potential of your hero to actually do that. Um, so here, uh, the guy's respawning and you are prioritizing denies. Just push the lane. Just push the lane and go yeah. check the rune. I will tell you, as a 1k, or like as any low MMR player, if you shove the lane and then ask yourself what you can do now, by just looking at the timer and then looking at the map, you will gain so much more knowledge about the game and learn so many things that, like, you'll learn how much of the the map is just your oyster, man. You can just do whatever the fuck you want with it. But if the lane shoved in, you have the liberty to do whatever. So I want you to get in this habit over the next few days where first five minutes you're purely focused on CSing. And then from five to ten minute mark, you purely care about shoving in that lane. And then right when you finish those creeps, you look at the timer and you look at the map and establish what you think you're supposed to do with it. If you're a mid laner, you can check runes, you can look to gank. If you're a carry, you can look to jungle, you can look to pretty much just jungle. Like, that's pretty much what you can do. Like, between jungle and lane. You know, you go to a jungle camp, come back to lane. Jungle camp, come back to lane. And so, that's what I need to see from you. Because right here, you killed the guy, and then you prioritize denying. So it's like, what I care about is getting you to prioritize the right things. Now, to be clear to everyone in chat, it's not this simple. Dota is not this simple, right? I can't, you know, I, at the end of the day, it's not this simple. But I know for a fact, if you prioritize what I'm telling you to prioritize, you're going to learn a lot of random stuff along the way. You're going to be like, oh, bad matchups, good matchups. Oh, I need more mana to do that. Oh, I don't have time to do that. Oh, I, you know, and it's all based on these parameters that you have to meet in the first place maximum cs first five minutes lanes get pushed towers get defended and if you've taken care of that you can do whatever you want in the game because that's what needs to be done so i'd say i want to spend the majority of our coaching session on the next session because i think right now i've given i i, I think i've tried to align yes, you in the way that i want you to and i think anything else i say from here is going to be very repetitive so I hope I've given some really clear homework. Do you understand what you think you need to do in the next like three to four days to get the most out of the remainder of your lesson? Do you feel like you understand? Are there any questions you have? Con um, um, clarifications? No, I think if if what I'm, if my homework is making sure that in sort of the first ten minutes of the game I have these two stages yes. and that I'm maximizing CS in the first five minutes, and then I am maximizing my efficiency in terms of farming in the five to ten minute mark yeah and that's going to set me up for the rest of the game yeah so what i want to see is if that's really clean we can start talking about all kinds of stuff you're running into in that stage but we can also talk about what you're doing later on because then you're hitting the timings properly at least close to it you know at least like somewhat close to it i'm seeing a game i can somewhat recognize and then we can talk about hey like this is where you should have rotated or this is like the item you should have built. Or, you know, we can talk about all types of stuff. But if, if this part of the game is to a point where, like, I feel like it needs to be worked on drastically, I, I don't feel comfortable, um, you know, reliably giving you any help past that. So, yeah. okay. So that is your homework. And the goal of the goal of the follow-up quickly of this session is that we'll be able to talk about a lot more because I'm going to see what happens with your drilling this mindset in your brain you know like that's what we're trying to do we're going to be drilling it into your brain and seeing what you do with it so um i'm done with dpc now uh i don't have any more casting or anything so my schedule's relatively way more open uh, i've already added you on discord so just yeah. uh i i would say anytime and then between like three to seven days from now just message me the day before saying hey like i got a couple games i think i'm getting what you're trying to get me to get i want and, and i'm ready or whatever you know just let me know um does yeah. that sound good to you sounds great yeah okay. sweet um yeah just message me on discord and uh we'll schedule a time sometime in the next few days so wicked yep. thanks very much no problem dude see ya cheers bye